The internet can be a dark place, but occasionally there's a spot of light. One day, I was sitting here at work at BuzzFeed, and I get this strange email. It's someone just telling me about their life, telling me about how they have book club tomorrow, how the tree outside of their window is blooming, so spring must be here, and telling me about how their 102nd birthday is this weekend. 100 second birthday. So I showed it to my desk neighbor, Ben, and I was like, dude, Ben, what's the deal with this email from this lady? And Ben looked over and he was like, wow, that's adorable. At the end of the email, it's signed B, B-E-A. I don't believe in anything spiritual, but my grandmother's name was B. And of all the members of my family, I would say I am the most similar to my grandma. She was a writer, I'm a writer. When my grandma turned 80, I even portrayed her in a family play. Grandma B was a very extremely important figure in my life. And here I am getting this email from a woman named B. So there's something too magical about this to ignore. I said, hello B, I believe you have the wrong email address, though your book club and kitchen both sound quite lovely. Happy birthday. Cheers, Jordan. The magic of this was not lost on me, but I figured I'd leave it at that. So the next day, I get another email. Again, she tried to email this other Jordan, and again, she got me. So again, I let her know. As I'd get more emails, I'd show them to Ben. He'd be like, that's adorable too. So then a third time, B tried to get the other Jordan and wrote, I must have sent with a wrong address once. Now when I start, both addresses come up. You are my only one. Still sunny, B. That email she also meant for the other Jordan. He was her only one, not me. So I had to tell her yet again, Hi B, I'm afraid you still have the wrong Jordan. She responded, To whoever Jordan, I'm not sure I'll ever get you sorted out. My 101 years has caught up with me. And I felt so bad. B was starting to get frustrated, and I was worried that she would give up and not contact the right Jordan. So I started looking for him myself. My last name, spelled like it's spelled, is extremely uncommon. Brian Embry, my dad. Jordan Embry, me. Aviva Embry, my sister. Amber Embry, my sister-in-law. Tyler Embry, my brother. Mary Embry, my mom. Shane Embry, who lives in the UK. And his brother Sam Embry. Richard Embry, who lives in Tennessee. And as far as I can see, those are the only Embrys that exist on Facebook. That's only eight Embrys in the world on Facebook. And somehow she's accidentally getting this Jordan Embry. So I start looking for it without the middle E or with an E at the beginning. Every spelling you can think of, and I'm, I can't find anything. And then I have an idea. Mine's Embry, I-M-B-R-E-Y, and I tried searching I-M-B-E-R-Y. Jordan Embry, and this guy exists. I thought I was totally alone in this world in terms of having my exact name, and this guy almost has my exact name. Yeah, my name is Jordan Embry. I'm 22, and I was born and raised in Langley, British Columbia. And I currently live in Chilliwack, and for a living I make windows and doors. I found out about B through Ancestry DNA. We connected as distant relatives, so it told us that we had a shared ancestor in the recent past. We got in contact. And found Jordan is about a sixth generation from me as a cousin. He lives just over the line into British Columbia, so we've carried on a conversation. We've been in touch since last year, December. She'll write me and tell me about how her day went tell me about her book clubs, moles that appear in her garden. I give her advice how to get rid of them. I've never met anybody with a similar name, like Embury, or the same name. So I contacted Jordan Embury on Facebook and said, hey, I think a 102 year old woman named B is trying to contact you. And it turns out it's right, but he's also never met her. Frankly, I wasn't willing to uh, just say that's the end of the story. So I asked B if she'd like to be pen pals. Now asking someone to be your pen pal is like asking them to commit time and effort to you and why should she care about me? I'm just some guy who she emailed by accident who she has no relation to. But luckily B is a very kind and social person and she agreed to be my pen pal, and we've corresponded for months ever since then. I transposed the E and the R in the name, and I picked up another Jordan, and this Jordan is from California. The first one was 21 years old, the second one is 25 years old, and wrote the sweetest letter. So B and I have been corresponding since April, occasionally writing each other. She tells me all about her big extended family, and whichever grandkids' birthday is coming up, and whatever big parties they have planned. I tell her about my weird life making videos at BuzzFeed. I had an opportunity through work to go to Mumbai for a while, and uh, B was actually instrumental in helping me decide to take that opportunity. I think he would enjoy Mumbai more because it's exotic and farther from home, and maybe he has not been there before. And so then I got to thinking, I've been corresponding with B since April. Jordan embury has been corresponding with her for a while longer. Neither of us have met her in person. Neither of us have met each other. 
why don't we do it? We're gonna go to Bee's house, we're gonna go to her book club, we're gonna have a big dinner with her family, and we're all just gonna get to know each other. I don't really know what to expect. What I wanna get out of this experience, meeting Bee, would probably be her life experience, what it was like growing up in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, her secret to her longevity, because I wanna live to 105. In fact, my little world has come to me this time. I'm super excited and nervous for me, a guy with the same name as me, and my 102-year-old pen pal to all meet IRL. Jordan Embry. Hey, Jordan Embry. Yeah, nice to nice to meet you in real life. Yeah, you too. Is it pronounced Embury or Embury or Embury? Embury or Embury. But it's not Embury. No. No one says Embury. Sometimes. So we're different. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I get called Embry sometimes, but it's not correct. And you correct people, you're like, yeah. Embry is a bullshit name. My name yeah. is Embry. Mine is a better name. How long has this name been in your family? Hundreds of years. Really? Okay, yours has been around longer. <laughs> Mine is an Ellis Island change. A lot of Jews that came from Eastern Europe and stuff would change their name so they'd sound more American. Pennsylvanian Dutch Mennonite roots. They moved to Waterloo, Ontario. And from there, my family went to BC. Her family went to Washington State. Any big thing you're hoping to learn from meeting her? Yeah, I would like to learn what she's been eating. It's given her that longevity, because I would like to make it to the year 2100. Okay, and so that's... What's me at about You think the <laughs> biggest thing she has to teach us is how to eat healthy? <laughs> <laughs> we got books on that already. I want some like profound insight about like what it is to be a human. But I think that's a lot to ask of someone. <laughs> I want to know what it was like to, I guess, grow up in the dirty 30s, too. What do you think it was like? Quite depressing, maybe? She was alive during both world wars. That's nuts. When she was emailing you, she messaged me, and she's like, I wrote your email wrong. I've been writing this Jordan, California. And uh, so I guess you don't know that my flowers are blooming. I, was like, I guess <laughs> I don't, right? Did it annoy you a little bit that some other Jordan Embry was coming in and starting to pen pal with your pen pal? No, I guess the more the merrier. You're a good guy. We're getting into the woods now. Is this house? Uh, I think it's white. They did say something about that. Hey, what's yeah. the tree that's supposed to always be blooming over here? So oh trees. yeah, M, because their last name starts with M. One of the things that's crazy about being 102 is that her kids are in their 70s. Cousin Jordan and uh, well, honorary Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> honorary cousin. She's been looking forward to it since uh, I think August when you came back and started talking about it. It has been a big deal for the family. Yeah? It's because it's a big deal to her. This is what she lives for, big moments, new adventures. <laughs> So uh, we're, we're hanging tight in Bee's garage while our camera crew sets up for us to meet her. This is Bee's car. Uh, Kirk said she hasn't driven it since she was 99 years old. And she's now 102. That's a long time to drive. Yeah. See, let's look at that interior. Nice red burgundy. Dope. Nice chrome trim. Chrome trim. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if you think Bee is a hugger or a handshaker. Yeah, like we don't actually know her. No, we no. only know her by email. She don't know. So what's appropriate? Like, because we, we've known her. Is that what you're going to say? You're going to say greetings? No. Hey, Mom. We got a couple of Georgians here. No. Why, hello. Both Georgians? Yeah, this is California. No, no. Georgia. okay. Hey. Right. See, Canada. Cousin Georgia. Well, I can tell you that you're not the same size, so I can tell, them yeah. tell you the difference. <laughs> so one's yeah. official and one's an honorary. Yeah, that's right, yes. Yeah. Nice to meet you in person. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to meet all you people. Nice to meet you. Oh, gosh, yeah. You're right. A hug? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Uh, Hugs are one thing that are easy to give and yeah. don't cost anything. You can't imagine how much excitement it's created. And I have the, this friend that is in deep into genealogy. So then she sent this one little email, and I answered, and there you were. <laughs> That's what created all of this. How long have you been doing book club? I think I've only been in about eight years. That's a lot of books. I'm not going to finish the book this time. It, I'm not reading as fast as I thought I was, and I'm just not going to do it at the end of it. You got rid of your moles? Yeah, there's one, one uh, tract left out there, a little black box out in the yeah. far side of the lawn. What year were you born? 1915. What's your secret? <laughs> well, I think mine's good genes, you know, that's just the way it is. Just before my 100th birthday, and I was going through immigration, a man looked at my passport and looked at me and looked at my passport and gave it back to me. He left his chair and came around and stooped down eye level with me, and he says, were you really born in 1915? I said I was, and everybody within hearing distance stopped and looked. What was your favorite decade? I don't know. Well, when I was younger, I used to hope I would live to be, see the 2000 on the calendar, and here I am. Gone through a lot of calendars since then. Can you tell us a little bit about your house? I moved into it in uh, June the 10th, 
in 1941. My dad built the house. This is about B. Matthewson. This kind of sums it up. One day this guy came by, it was in the evening, and he wanted coal. It's a sack of coal. It was a dollar a sack. And he said, I can go down on the, at the corner and get it for 90 cents. And I said, that's the place to get it. Well, they're closed. I said, but you'd talk me out of 10 cents if you could, wouldn't you? Yeah, but he had also <laughs> made a comment about, where's your husband? I wouldn't have my wife out here doing oh, this. Yeah. <laughs> and she says, no, but you'd chisel me out of 10 cents. Having lived 102 years, would you say you lived carefully? Like, did you smoke, drink, stay out late? No, I didn't do those things. But when I was growing up, it was a meat and potatoes type. You know, that's the way people live. So when you emailed me by accident the first time, and then I later asked if you would be my pen pal, uh -huh. did you think that was really weird? Were you like, why does this guy want to be my pen pal? <laughs> oh, why not? <laughs> <laughs> when you were our age, what were you doing? So I'm 25, he's 21, right? I'm 26. Well, by that time. <laughs> 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 He's <laughs> 22 yeah, now. I got both of our ages wrong. <laughs> so what were you doing at 22? Well, I had just had my first child and she's 80 years old now, <laughs> or almost. Do you remember what you were doing when you were 26 years old? Uh, I, I don't know, that's too much. You yeah, figure yeah. it out. <laughs> what would you say, like, in your lifetime is the biggest culture shift that you can remember? Well, I think it's almost right now, the lack of respect that people give, that the younger generation gives to our older people. And the kids that go by here, very seldom do I ever get eye contact. They're punching these things and there's stuff in their ears. We took her to the emergency room. We were there like till two in the morning. Broken uh, one and two. And one and three, one and three. One and three, which normally would probably be it. So what she'd done since she fell at seven in the morning, she went down and did her laundry twice because she had blood on her on her stuff and she wanted to be cleaner for that. And I just learned about two days ago that we have a unit available for me to move into assisted living. <laughs> he has lived in the same house for over 70 years. And in 1972, we bought this, this finishing and had, had the house, had a little bit of remodeling done. And it's a the Washington cherry tree. The, the carpeting is all on maple. My kids will remember skating on it with the wax when we <laughs> and what again is your relationship to B and to Thatcher? Third cousins, four times removed. Fifth cousins, twice removed. <laughs> so this is B? That's B. And you're here. Okay. The baby in that picture is Thatcher. Yeah, that little baby yes. is Thatcher? That has the fish food in it. Oh. Somebody wants to get it. And that's the dogwood right behind her. That's the dogwood. That's it. The dogwood. That's the legendary dogwood that started this whole thing. <laughs> wow. I can't believe it. Um, Who writes about their dogwood? Ready? Ready? Go. Come on, fishies. <coughs> I'm not interested. He's gonna take us to her book club. Jordy, has B talked to you a lot about her book club? Yeah. Do you read? Not at all. Yeah, me either, pretty much. Maybe they'll inspire us to, yeah. to get back into reading. Regular decaf. Uh, decaf. decaf. I didn't know the difference between decaf. So how often do you all have book club? Once a month. We were both saying we're hoping you guys will inspire us to read more. And who, who chooses? We all do. We all do. Right, we just wing it. Well, we have somebody that always reads one or two. Is there a certain genre you guys like to stick to? No. no. A certain what? Any it's the last hurrah, because next month I'll be moving. I was spent two hours yesterday at Mural Gardens answering all the questions. My grandmother's name was B. She was a big writer and reader and a participant in book clubs for a lot of her life. <laughs> Did you find the author's narrative style effective? I never thought much about the style. I didn't either. It was, it was very was, readable. Well, Dickens knew that he had a, a good thing going, but I'm sure he never realized the great lengths it was going to go to. Mm -hmm. What you got there? Well, I can't remember what I, I can't remember what I wrote up. Jordan never got the email that you meant to send him originally, which came to me, so. We thought it'd be fun to have you read him the original email. Hi, Jordan, from a new Dell computer. Newer is supposed to be easier. The touch is different, but I'll keep at it. The pink dogwood I see from my kitchen window and the lilac by the front door are in bloom. I guess spring is close. I'm preparing for book club here next Tuesday. There are 11. We meet at 9 a.m. and serve a light breakfast. The book is Vanity Fair by Thackeray. The book is 640 pages small print. I looked it up in the synopsis. Otherwise, another birthday coming next week as well. I can't believe 102. Oh, the sun is coming out. Time to get to work and have a good day. B. That was your first 
email. What, what were you thinking? Like, I, then, then you were confused, huh? Yeah, it doesn't make you feel to know that this frustration was going on. Just trying to talk to you. Oh, I feel bad. <laughs> yeah, I was okay with it as long as uh, uh, B replies to my emails first. That's it. <laughs> you're okay with me jumping yeah, in yeah, as long yeah. as you get priority? Yeah. Your family, I'm not. Yeah. I'm just some guy on the internet. New, new family. <laughs> were you aware of the, sim of the uh, names were simple? It's similar? No, we had never heard of each other. Oh. Or I'd ever search my name, he would always come up because he's more well known, right? Through oh, okay. media. So it was like, <laughs> did you mean Jordan Embry? I swore in this one. <laughs> Damn. I carefully checked before I sent. We'll try to find my original letter, B. Yeah. Yeah. This is your favorite place to eat? Any Mexican restaurant. How do you pronounce your last name? Embry? Embury. I propose a toast. Hey. All right, yeah. Many a toast here. Toast to Grandma. Oh. GGB. Thank you. And to the Jordans. The Jordans. Being here and being pen pals with Grandma and the wonderful relationship, and we're all happy that you guys are all here. Everyone with. Cheers. 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 Could you break down for us sort of how the connection happened one more time? How you connected these two? Certainly. We've made up her family tree and put it on the Ancestry, so... Um, the how story, did that come about? She and I worked together, and her family has done a lot of research, mm -hmm. so I just had to incorporate it into Ancestry. Once her results came back, then it talks about matches, and anybody that has a potential match um, will show up mm -hmm. and yeah. Jordan no. emailed me so I said that I would contact B and ask her if it was okay for them to talk and B's great at doing emails and so she writes back and <laughs> that, that communication started. I just want to say thank you to all of you for being such a generous host to us and welcoming both of us as family. He really is family and I'm just some guy and you're welcoming me as family. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just lucky that you were both so nice. Jordan's a couple years younger than me, and I never had a younger sibling, and so it kind of felt like having a little brother. I think I'll stay in touch with Jordan and Bri. Uh, uh, we've thrown out that idea that maybe we should switch lives. You make windows, and uh, I make film. I expected nothing less than the best when meeting Bee's family, and they treated us like family. Bee's a very kind-hearted person, uh, fun to be around. You never notice the you know 80 year age gap. I feel like I talk to her like I talk to anybody. Listen, Jordan, he really is like I thought he was. California Jordan matches how his personality comes across. I noticed he uh, helped clean after breakfast this morning. Not only a caring person, but pays attention to what goes on around him. At the end of all of this, I feel really uh, fulfilled. Uh, I made two new great friends. We spend a lot of time right now focusing on distrust for our fellow humans. Try hard to remember how many people are out there who just want to connect with other good people, feel loved and give love, and I was really reminded of that this week. All the internet is is a tool that connects us. It can connect us in bad ways, but it can also connect us in beautiful ways. I feel on top of the world. It's hard to tell you the lift I felt just knowing that you had met. I don't travel a lot, and to have my world come to me, it's pretty uplifting. And I know something more is going to happen, something good. You think you have two new family members? Oh, absolutely. I have maybe five of you. <laughs> I um, came in here feeling like a little bit like worried that I had invaded this private thing you two had had, and I could not have felt more wrong about that once I saw how warm and welcoming you were to me and the friendship that we developed, too. And B, you were everything I expected to be. You're an amazing woman. Jordan, you're an awesome person, too, and I hope we keep in touch, and you're my new... Uh, and pal as well. Well, I think it's great that you two have finally met. Sounds like you've, you've each acquired a new friend. Yes. As well as I have acquired several new ones. Both of you have lived up to my expectations and maybe beyond a little. Okay? This is so nice. And you know the hugs are returnable. And one for you. Yeah. yeah. So glad of the other time you be. It's fun. I'm glad you two met. Yeah. It's, it's been a great day. I like you, Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> That was awkward. <laughs> I like couldn't decide. I was like, am I high? What I was like, am I high five? <laughs>